Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Here is the uh, the faulty uh, auto tuner with the new bits fitted. There's a uh, diode that I fitted there, that diode, uh, to replace diode 46. The cathode of that is soldered onto this little bit of print here. I just scraped off a bit of the, uh, the varnish on the print and soldered it on there. So the cathode of D46 is now connected to the cathode of D47, which is how I think it was originally connected. It's got a little bit of heat shrink over there where I've uh, joined the... Just looking around the viewfinder, hang on. The little bit of the heat shrink there. And um, just to give it a bit of mechanical strength, I don't know if you can see that under there, under that diode, there's a bit of uh, silicon rubber under there, just so that it's sort of it's sort of quite firmly mounted. Because you know when the relays clack around, there's going to be a bit of vibration going through the board, so that will just give it a bit of mechanical strength. And uh, there's the uh, there's the RF choke. This is actually uh, 630 microhenries, so it's got quite a bit more inductance than the original one. It's also a little bit larger and a bit heavier, so I can't mount it across the front. The other one was mounted across here, like that. Um, but um, what I've done is it's, uh, it's soldered on one leg, and I've just put a bit of silicon rubber in there between it and a decoupling cap, just to give it a bit of mechanical strength. And then there's just a bit of 1mm building wire going from the other side of the choke to... Um, uh, where the RF comes in, there. Now, uh, I know it's a 1500 watt churner. Um, we can't have 1500 watts here in uh, Australia, 400 watts is our maximum. But even if I could put 1500 watts into here, what you've got to bear in mind is this is the, the low impedance end, this is the 50 ohm end. Uh, it's only going to be tuned with 20 watts, um, so there's not, there's not going to be any hairy voltages on here. Uh, even with 50, 1500 watts going into it, the voltage, peak to peak voltage across this point here is uh, pretty low. I did actually work it out. It's either, and, it's either 274 volts or 174 volts. It's not very much. Uh, peak to peak, uh, 1500 watts. Um, remember, you can, uh, you can calculate the voltage at that point. It's the, um, it's the power multiplied by, it's the square root of the power multiplied by the impedance. So. Um, you know, it's either 174 volts or 274 volts, either way, it was nothing to worry about. Now, <clears throat> you can see here there's a coax that disappears underneath, and it's connected by that uh, 90 degree elbow connector to the other side of that socket. So I'm feeding it with power along my RF tail, just as I did with the, uh, the new one when I tested it. And I have here, as if by magic, a bias T. Okay, so if I flick the bias T on, there we go, makes a nice healthy sound and uh, the display looks to be doing what it should be doing. So um, all that remains now is to uh, apply some RF to it and see if it tunes. Uh, I won't be doing that today, so I've just come home from work so I just thought I'd bang this video out um, quickly. I probably won't uh, give it a squirt of RF until the weekend and uh, and see if it works, but I reckon it's going to work. So there we go. That's the sort of sound uh, I'd expect to hear from it. And um, the display to me uh, looks like it's displaying uh, what it should. Okay. Um, I think uh, I think <coughs> excuse me. I think that's about it. Uh, what I might do <coughs> excuse me. Now what they've done is, um, they've got the control part of it here, just as you would find on the 998 um, non-RT version. So these buttons here do exactly the same as what the buttons on the front panel of the 998 do. Uh, this one here is the mode button. And uh, I thought, well, what I might do is select this to show uh, what values of L and C it's using to match a given load and then turn the uh, turn the power on and off a few times and see if it stays in that mode if it does then I think I might cut a an, uh, an oblong uh, window in the cover and put a put a clear uh, clear window in there so that um, when it's achieved its match I can actually see what values it's using and I think that could be useful for um, uh, if, I, if I wanted to make a, a fixed match 
uh, for a given band or uh, a couple of uh, a couple of different bands and um, uh, and remove the tuner and use it for something else. All I've got to do is put this in line, get a tuning solution, note the values, uh, go and wind the values, and uh, you know make up the uh, the value of capacitance, and um, all done. So there we are. That's the state of play with the uh, with the tuner that had the short on the inside. All seems good. Power fed through the coax. Bits replaced. So uh, we'll see how it goes. As always, hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.